Hi, I'm Dr. Sean Kilday, Chairman of the Department of Communication and Journalism at Rotter University. And I'm joined today by Dr. Ebo and Dr. Howard, uh, both professors in our department. And today we're going to talk a little bit about student success. And so, Dr. Howard, I'll start with you. What do you think some important things students can do to have success, especially in their freshman year at Rider? Um, I think in students' freshman year, time management is going to be really important. It's the first time you're in a situation where you don't have your parents telling you what to do, you really don't have teachers telling you what to do, um, so you have freedom. So I think time management, making sure you're getting to classes, you're scheduling your extracurricular activities, uh, scheduling time to study, um, would be a big component to success in your freshman year. Great. Dr. Evo? I would uh, I'd go along with that, but I also would add uh, advising, advising, advising. To be able to do that, you've got to get in touch with your advisor right away. In fact, I tell my students to actually get in touch with me before they even come here. I know who they are. Sometimes I send them an email, say, listen, get in touch with me, send me an email back, let me know how you feel, let me know what you're thinking, let me know what your concerns are, your anxieties, and, you know, like she said, first experience in, with freedom, and that could be overwhelming. Um, you're on your own all of a sudden, and you have to really manage your life, right? right. Schedule, and some of them, it takes a little bit of um, help. So I say, listen, get to your advisor right away so I can help you. Even if you think you know what you're doing, it doesn't hurt to do that anyway. Okay. Have someone kind of help you get through the first year jitters, right? Okay. And get it considered. So I'd go along with that, but I also say advising is part of that. Okay, so a lot of these students who are coming to college didn't have academic advisors in high school. Can you maybe expound just a little bit about exactly what an academic advisor is? We'll start with you, Dr. Howard. Well, I would say your academic advisor can be your go-to person um, to help you with scheduling your courses. Um, if you're having trouble in a class, you can go to your academic advisor and talk through it with your academic advisor. Um, if you feel like you need to withdraw from a class or something like that, your academic advisor can talk you through the best options um, for your college career. Okay. I would go along with that also. Um, you know, they have guidance counselors in high school, and that's slightly kind of different. You know, the counselors kind of help you, you know, uh, think about college and help you kind of plan for college experience and help you apply to college and stuff. But when you come here, you're already in college. And so like she was saying, it's a little different kind of um, advising, right? So it'll help you, you know, um, navigate the complexity of college. Even though know, college is fun, but there's a lot of stuff that's gonna be new to them, new experiences. Somebody has to help you navigate that, you know? Uh, whether it's uh, uh, extracurricular activities and knowing what clubs to join, knowing other things to do, even help you think ahead. Mm -hmm. You know, you're a freshman, but it doesn't hurt to think ahead. Think down the line. What do you what do you want to do? What, what is your major? What's your career goals? He can start now thinking about it. Some of them don't know what they want to do. That's fine, but but advice can help you kind of think it through. You know, what do you want to do? What are your plans? What are your goals? What are your expectations? What are your interests? So advice can help you in all kinds. Not just picking classes, but it can help you think long range, yeah. right? So it's a really very important, I think, very important process. Right. I, I would say. And so, what are some things you think freshmen? I think we all expect them to do really well academically their freshman year or at least try. What are some things you think they should do outside of the academic sphere that you think is important to the college experience while they're here? I think they should get involved. You know, there's so many things on a college campus for every type of student, every type of personality. So just asking your academic advisor questions about certain programs or um, you know, uh, even even sports for regular students. Um, if you're not on an academic scholarship, or athletic scholarship, or something like that, um, talking to professors about different programs you can be involved in, whether it's the honor society um, or whether it's something a little bit more social and fun outside of school. Um, I think those things are important. Okay, great. I uh, I agree also with that, um, but also I I try to let them know that. Um, your first year is also what I call your careful year. You don't want to get overwhelmed, you know, by getting into so many things because, again, you're trying to kind of learn this system, so to speak. So, you know, as much as I want you to get involved and kind of explore other things, I tell them that about 40% of learning happens in the classroom, 60% outside the classroom, clubs, associations, friends. That you, you learn, there's a lot of learning. It doesn't just happen in the classroom. Things that you do outside the classroom, you can also learn. 
going to events on campus. So, so I tell them to get involved and get engaged, but also be careful as you don't do too much. You know, um, don't pledge in a sorority for you know, your, first year, your first semester at least maybe. Um, take time to kind of know what's going on. Don't jump into many things. It's any, it interferes with academic preparation, which you really need to get down. Um, and I tell them, you know, many of them will say, oh, I, my first year, I can kind of take it easy. I can kind of blow it off and stuff, and I can make it up. It doesn't work that way. Once you screw up your first semester, it carries it for four years. You will never get that four point ever. Once you get those C's, you're playing catch up forever. You're never going to catch up. So you should start getting your A's that first semester. Get your A's. Once you get your D's and C's, oh, I'll make it up in two years. Doesn't happen. You will never, ever get there. So don't screw up that first semester or first year. Get, start working right away. Get your A's. Mm -hmm. Don't say, I'm going to put, I'll get A's down there. I'm going to just do it. No, 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 don't do that. So part of that is trying not to be overwhelmed with things that you do, but kind of, man again, goes to managing. Manage your schedule, manage what you can handle. You know yourself. If you think that you cannot handle too many things, just do one thing at a time. You know, maybe just join one club. Don't do 10 clubs or five clubs if you can't handle it. So again, it goes to what she was saying about managing and advising too. And, you know, both things I think go, go hand in hand, I think. What are some easily identifiable things that students do wrong early in, in their college career that you see that they, can, that they can avoid just maybe by being made notice of it. I'll give you an example. My daughter's starting school this fall, she's starting college, and I told her, shut your phone off. Don't silence it. Don't I literally shut it off and put it away while you're in class and pretend it doesn't exist. Because I, in my classes, I'll see students on their phone, and then I think they're disengaged, and I can't help. They might be, I don't know what they're doing, but I can't help but draw conclusions that they're not fully engaged. Mm -hmm. and when they come looking for extra credit or things like that, I feel less inclined to want to help them because I feel like they were wasting time in the classroom. So whether or not they are, it's that perception. So I say just put your phone away and your laptop. If you don't need it for notes, close it and listen to the lecture and pay attention and be engaged. What are some things that you think students are, problems that they have early on or things that they do that you as professors in the classroom see and say, this is a problem? Um, I think missing assignments. I think sometimes freshmen, don't really take the courses as seriously until their junior or senior year. Mm -hmm. I think they should take it seriously from day one. Mm -hmm. So I see a lot of students like from freshman to senior year, they're totally like transformed, they're more mature. I think that freshman year is important to not miss assignments and think that you're gonna catch up at the end of the semester. You know, by the time the end of the semester mm -hmm. comes, you know, your grades already, you know, below a B or below the place that you wanted it to be. And then you're asking for, um, extra credit or what can you do to pass the class so starting it's better to start out strong um, and then you have the ability maybe to slip up throughout the semester as opposed to starting out really bad and then trying to catch up okay one thing I sort of notice and I tell them about is um, when they have issues or have a problem they just kind of let it sit you know, let it sit and then next they know there's one more problem one more issue it kind of begins to pile up and then they get overwhelmed, and then they get, uh, get frustrated, they get depressed. So what I tell them is when you have an issue, deal with the issue right away. You're having trouble in class and film class, or you don't understand the professor, go right away to the professor that day, not tomorrow, not next week. Go right away after class. Go to office hour. Listen, I didn't understand this in class. Can you help me? Once you say, oh, I'll get to it tomorrow, I'll get to you next week, then next tomorrow is another issue. And then next, it's 10, 10, 15 of them, and oh God, you don't know where to start. So always address concerns right away. Whether it's issue with your roommate or issue with, whatever the case may be, there's always somebody to help you. Tell them there's all kinds of help. You have difficulty writing, it's a writing lab. Issue with math, there's a math lab. Issue with anything you have problem, there's any, someone to help you. Writer provides all kinds of help. You just have to go get it. You have to go get it. There's all kinds of help. So if you fail, you really fail because you're not. Right, but there's all kinds of help. So you gotta know where the help is and go get it. If you're not sure, talk to someone. They'll point you where to go. But that's important to take care of the issue right away. Don't let it sit. Because all it does is pile, it doesn't go away, right? Mm -hmm. You can pr pretend it's not there, it's gonna be there waiting for you. So you better take care of it right away so you can then move on, so. Great, all right, all right well, thank you very much. Dr. Bosa Ibo, Dr. Sheena Howard, thank you so much for being with us. And thank you all for joining us. Sure, thank you.